Bible read chapter by chapter, verse by verse. All right, Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and uh, welcome to our afternoon study. We are in the book of Deuteronomy, and we are in chapter seven, and, and, and coming off the heels of the last time we were together um, where we uh, were given instruction, children of Israel given instruction, also given instruction on how to raise our children, how to instruct our children, loving Yah with our whole heart, how we were able to really look into what that means, what that means from our perspective in regards to how we first have to be settled in our hearts, that Yah's way is the only way to then instruct our children in a way that it sticks with them, that it permeates in their hearts and minds, that it is their very being. So when they go out into this world, they are able to function without strain. Um, and now as we come into chapter seven, he, he calls out the specific people and he calls them and reminds them of what he has done. He reminds us of what he has done. And now he focuses, he turns his focus more now on separation, our separation. And if we remember back in um, Numbers chapter 23, and I'll, I'll go there just for brevity of time, you can turn there if you want. But in verse 9 of chapter 23, remember Balaam uh, was called by Balak to, to put a curse on to the Israelites, but Balaam was only able to speak what Yah allowed him to speak. And he says in verse 9, he says, For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There, a people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Total separation he calls Israel to. We see it even in that. They're separate, um, Israel is. Distinct, Israel is. And that is the same way we are supposed to be. Everything about us uh, should be obviously different from the rest of the world. And we kind of went into that this morning. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll dig a little bit more to see what Yah is saying to his people um, and us. So we'll pick up in chapter seven. Um, we'll read the first, let's look at the first five verses. Um, and for the newcomers, we, um, whoever reads, um, uh, gets the first opportunity to uh, see or speak about what they see or what stands out to them. And then we discuss uh, the full chapter as a whole. Make sure we look at every verse uh, to explain so that we're clear on the instructions of God. So if you want to read, just raise your hand. We'll call on you. And uh, our first reader will read the first five verses of chapter seven. Who's my first reader? Brother Dean and Carmen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Uh, good day, good day, good day. From Portugal. Um, what, Portugal. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're going to be wherever you guys are real soon. So let's not talk too quick, man. <laughs> oh, praise oh, praise hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. So, okay. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're reading from Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. 
Five, okay. When Yahuwah, your Elohim, brings you into the land which you go to possess, he shall also clear away many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hewites and the Yebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahuwah, your Elohim, gives them over to you, you shall strike them and put them under the ban completely. Make no covenant with them and show them no favor. And do not intermarry with them. You do not give your daughter to his son and you do not take his daughter for your son. For he turns your sons away from following me to serve other mighty ones. Then the displeasure of Yahuwah shall burn against you and promptly destroy you. But this is what you do to them. Break down their slaughter places and smash their pillars and cut down their asherim and burn their carved images with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What stands out to you there, brother? Um, so, uh, firstly, that we, it's funny because I was on um, the gathering earlier on today. And so, you know, it's, it, it just makes me think about there are some emotional places that we find ourselves in, even knowing, even when we feel we know what is right, we still are the, the tugging of our emotions. But here in the word, in the scriptures, it's clearly stating a couple of things. And what, the first thing is to be clear that though we'll be brought to a place to possess a place, um, it is, you know, Yahuwah who brings us to a place. Um, to, he sh he's bringing us to a place to clear away nations that are mightier than us. So straight away, it talks about, it, it's eliminating the fear because it's telling us straight away that I told you from the very beginning that these would be mightier than you. There would be a stronger opposition. And, you know, like um, my wife and I were talking, in, you know, when in the scripture where I can't remember who it is right now says, you know, we were like grasshoppers, you know, in the land. Um, so it made me think about that. And, you know, he's, he's eliminating such language and such a position of the heart from the from the beginning. Um, and so he's making it clear that they will be mightier in appearance, um, but not based on the Elohim that they serve. Um, and then it's also saying, uh, making it clear that uh, they... It's not saying to me that they, the people should be destroyed, but it definitely is saying that the systems of belief should be destroyed. Um, and um, it's also making it clear that there should not be, so though that, that you're not looking to destroy every person, it's not then saying that, well, now we've destroyed your system, you know, um, and you're not, you know, your, your other gods are not there to serve, then we, should, we can be friends. It's saying even no matter how close, no matter how much interaction, if there be, there definitely should not be any intermarrying. That, again, you know, <laughs> is a serious thing. And, and, and Yahuwah is making it clear that, you know, no matter what you feel emotionally to these, to, to these people, um, that you should know that to marry them would be to, for, to have them draw you away uh, from worshipping me and honouring me. Um, and also... Um, it's, it's quite clear when in, in four chapter four, where it says he turns, sorry, verse four, apologies, chapter seven, verse four, where he says, for he turns your sons away from following me to serve other mighty ones. Then the displeasure of Yahuwah shall burn against you and promptly destroy you. So not only will you kindle his anger, he's making it clear that you will be destroyed, which is, you know, which he is showing you how serious he is about this because he didn't tell you to destroy them. He told you to destroy their systems of belief, the things that they hold to, but he will destroy you if you allow yourself to be led away by them. Um, and, but this is what, um, and yeah, he's making it clear, break down the altars. He, he's shown no mercy to the structure that basically rises up itself, um, attempts to rise up itself against me. So hallelujah. Great job. No, thank you, brother. That was a very good, very good description of, of what we just read together. Um, you know, and I particularly like um, um, your, your understanding of 
system because that that's going to come back. We're going to talk about that. Um, anyone else want to add anything to what they see uh, before I start going through each first? Brother Rick. Shabbat Shalom once again. Yeah, this is uh, really taking me back to what we talked about this morning told uh, a lot. Told you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it has it connecting to, you know, his people, uh, the title of this, this message, if you will. Uh, it's interesting how, how core, uh, closely correlated these are about not making, you know, vows or covenants. Um, it's, in, it's really interesting when we think about this, because, you know, their brother, uh, he, he shared that, you know, it doesn't necessarily say that he, he's telling them to, to go and kill them because it's actually telling us to cast them out or telling them to cast them out. Um, I'm looking at the, the strongs here to see, you know, what, what words there for the cast out because it's to pluck off. Uh, that is to, uh, to eject basically to, to drive out, to, you know, to loose or to put off. So it, it, there, of course there was battle. I mean, they, they went in there and, uh, they were, they had to deal with some, a force that was bigger, you know, had more, uh, seven nations. Uh, that's a lot of folks. And we're talking about a small nation of, of, of warriors here. But the thing is, is they were given specific directions or specific guidelines, which he's telling them that they're going to do, you know, he's telling them to go in there and, and, and Yahuwah shall deliver them before you. He, so he's going to be basically leading this charge as he always does. If he's going to give us a commandment, but then he goes in here and he tells them that they shall smite. Now that word, is, that means to strike, you know, to beat, uh, you know, so they were, they were going in there. Sometimes it can be punished. It can be murder, you know, so there's going to be a mixture of things that are happening, but they're to drive these folks out because there needs to be a clean slate in this land that they're being given. Um, because then he goes on and he tells us that we shouldn't intermingle. Basically, we shouldn't marry their daughters or their sons, you know? So that was speaking to me, you know, when we're in this walk, how we have to guard who we allow close to us, especially in an intimate relationship as a, you know, a marriage. Uh, we need to choose wisely coming into this, you know, if, if you're already with somebody that's not, we can see how being equally yoked could cause a problem where it could lead, you know, a chosen person, if you will, astray. And that's one of his big concerns here, you know, that, that, that we don't get led astray and that we don't go and serve other Allahims, you know, because we don't want you know, who is anger to be kindled against us, you know, because he's promising to destroy He'll destroy us if we do so. So, you know, again, there's a lot of uh, uh, caution that's given to us here in this short few verses, but there's a lot of power that's uh, being dis displayed here towards us that we need to follow his words, his directions. Same thing that we said this morning when there was questions asked about, you know, how to go and, and, and speak to those of the nation, the wicked, you know. You know, we may not be called to go and smite anybody uh, or drive somebody out, but we may be called to go say something to them, you know, um, and we got to be ready to, to be following that, that lead that we're uh, being directed towards. So, you know, interesting. Uh, now I see where you were talking about how closely this relates. And it's very interesting how we find that to be the case as we're walking together through this journey through the Britain, through this, through your studies of the, of the uh, Torah, how they're lining up almost week after week. You know, we talk about something and you're like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> so it's amazing. Uh, it, it's, it just shows us how they're linked together. You know what I'm saying? So, thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, uh, specifically, uh, Yahushua uh, quoted more from Deuteronomy than any other book. Um, and, we're, and we see, you know, when we go to the Gospels, we see Torah come alive because they're talking about Torah. And I think that's, that's kind of what's missed when you add in this whole idea of dispensation. There is no dispensation, it's one book, you know, one book. So, but praise y'all. No, these great insights by you, Brother Rick and, and Brother Dean. Thank you for 
um, sharing what she she observed. Anyone else want to share anything before I go in? All right, let's look at it. So, so he, he starts off this passage um, when uh, Yahuwah, your Elohim, brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites. The Hittites were from uh, the northern region of Asia, Asia Minor, originally. Um, the Gerashites mentioned in Genesis chapter 16, uh, chapter 10, um, also First Chronicles. The Amorites were natives, of the population um, in, in the Canaan region. Um, and they settled there in the mountains, the Canaanites did, um, which were uh, settled on the coastlands. And the Parasites were a native population that had settled in the hill country. The Hivites were a native population settled south of the Lebanon mountains. And the Jebusites were offshoot of the Hittites and were native populations settled near what later became Jerusalem. So we have these seven nations um, where Yahuwah says no toleration. And it reminded me um, or pointed, it points back to uh, Genesis chapter uh, 15, um, where we have Yahuwah tell Abram, I'll read it, Genesis chapter 15. I'm gonna look at verse 16. He says this um, to Abram. Uh, let me back up. Let me go up to verse 12. He says, now when the sun was going down, a deep swell, uh, excuse me, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out of the great possession. Now, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. Um, and we talked about this before, that 400 years, um, he never, you know, condemned nationally. It was always um, a chance individually for, for anyone from, this, from these nations. Um, Israel was to be a light, you know? Um, you know, Yah measures time morally. And we see it took 400 years for the iniquity to rise up to a point where they were driven out, where the Israelites were ready to come in. Um, so he measures time morally, as we talked about before, not by a clock in regards to sin, right? So now we see the time has come. You know, verse four. Um, or verse three, it says, you know, nor shall you take marriages with them. And we'll talk about that in a second. But time has come for, for them to go in. And his plan was that there would be one nation, um, that all would be converted. How? By the light of the Israelites. Israel was supposed to be the light to the world. What does he tell us that we are? Talked about that, you know, for, for quite a bit of time, like salt and light early this morning. Well, this is the foundation of it. This is where it comes from. He never condemned nationally and always gave a chance individually to the people. Um, but because of continual and habitual sin, because of a life contrary to him, 
all of these nations had to be cast out. All of these nations had to be dealt with. Um, most of you know that I often talk about my wife and I's first date where we went to the University of Pennsylvania's Archaeological Museum. And this is where we see all of the actions of these nations, um, the, the, the children's sacrifice, the, the debauchery, the sexual, you know, dances, the, the, the sexual immorality, all of the things that these, these, these um, nations were committing, the idols, the things that they were, the altars they were building, all of these things were contrary to and, and what Yahuwah wanted the Israelites to steer clear from, wanted them not to take part in, you know, and, and this is why he wanted them to destroy. Why? Because they would turn away from him, verse three. You know, you know, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, I'll turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter six. I'll look at a couple of verses here. 2 Corinthians chapter six. Verse 14 says, do not be uh, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light and darkness? And what accord has Messiah and Bilal? Or what part of a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of Elohim with idols? For you, are the temple of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them and I will be their Elohim and they my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate. Is that word set apart? Says Yahuwah, do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says Yahuwah Almighty. So we see clearly here that it's not just based on words, it's also based on promises, not just what we read and memorize and understand and know and can expound on, but on the promises that he has given us, right? And we see that, you know, throughout as we look, you know, through what we're reading here in chapter seven, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me too, and I'm gonna to get to verse three in a second, but in verse um, five, he says this, he said, but thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars, break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn and their carved images with fire. Um, but the understanding is that we are to separate. And we talked about earlier how, you know, in this separation, we maintain a separate position, right? This is not isolation, but rather separation. Separation is contact without contamination, right? We can't be totally isolated because if we're isolated, how will people know what Yahuwah is saying? How will people know what, how Yahuwah wants us to live? How will we be a light in the midst of darkness if we have total isolation? However, we are to be separated, meaning contact with them in the midst of, like Brother Paul brought out earlier, of the world, but not being contaminated by it contact with unbelievers to affect them, right? We have to have contact with them to affect them. We have to be the salt and the light, you know? But we don't find fellowship with them. We have no fellowship. There is no fellowship with light and dark. There is no covenant with them. We don't partake in the things that they do. You know, we're, we're not around them to be uh, participants in their ways of life, we are around them to show the difference between us and them, light and dark, 
Yahuwah and not Yahuwah, right? We are to be an example for them, a, a, a picture of what the Father wants, right? Because one of the things that we have to understand is that we talked about earlier being that truth, you know? Um, and, and let me explain that a little bit because when it comes to truth, you know, there are people that see you. They see how you live. <clears throat> they see how joyful you are. They see how positive you are. And they just have a problem with you. You know, they just don't like you. You know, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they have a problem with you. That's antagonism without you even trying. So just by you standing on truth, the opposition is antagonized. Um, that is opposition just by being truthful, right? So when we see that we understand that truth still because we're not tearing down anybody's altars we're not um slaying anyone we're not burning anything but truth still destroys the altars and what they believe in right that's why they're so anxious towards you when you bring truth love as somebody talked about earlier still destroys false elohims right Light still destroys darkness. Just simply go into a dark room and turn on the light. It's dark no more. You know, so we have to make sure that we maintain an understanding of those things when it comes to us being uh, 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 an influence on those around us and not infected or affected by the influence that is around us, right? And you don't have to force it. We talked about it earlier. It doesn't have to be a, a, a package plan to go down and conquer a certain amount of people. No, it's our regular behavior, right? It's how we act every day. You open your mouth and truth comes out and things change, right? Or questions are asked. And that is what converts the mind and the heart of the people that are around you. Like what? Why don't you do things this way? Why why don't you why don't you go here? Or why when you're here don't you do what they're doing? Why are you over here and doing this? Why don't you celebrate this day or that day? Why do you celebrate these weeks? Why do you worship on Saturday and not Sunday? Why do you call them Yahuwah? Why do you call them Yahushua? You know these questions are just you simply acting in your regular behavior. That's a witness, you know, without you having a, a, a prepackaged, scripted plan, right? You're just living the way Yahuwah called you to live. You are simply being a light, right? Verse three, I told you we get back to it. Nor shall you make marriages with them you shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Verse four, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other Elohims. This is not a prohibition of mixed marriages according to race. Let me say that again. This is not a prohibition of mixed marriages according to race. This is a prohibition of mixed marriages in regards to worship, in regards to what you believe, in regards to the system as, 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 as we talked about earlier. Those that are looking, those that are watching need to see a fluency from husband to wife, from parents to children there can be no difference, right? This is what this is about. You know, nowhere in scripture is that true. We see um, in, in Joshua chapter 24, let's look at this. This, this. this takes us back to the beginning, right? 
Joshua chapter 24. Let's look at verse one. It says, then Joshua gathered all tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, for their officers. And they presented themselves before Elohim. And Joshua said to all the people, thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abram, Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other Elohims. We can stop right there. We can stop right there. They came from that same place of idol worship, right? We're talking about a people that are no different other than the fact that they had an experience with Yah, other than the fact that Yah called them out. Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and the father of Nahor dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other Elohims. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and, and gave him Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau, I gave the mountains of Sire <coughs> to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt also, I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them after I brought you out. So we clearly see that this people, and it goes on and it goes through the history and the, and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Gergesites to continue to tell the history here. But Joshua calling them back to the beginning, you know, to set, tell them, look, you were once what these people are. You were called out from them. Yah changed your mindset. He changed your heart. He gave you a new talk, literally gave Jacob a new walk. Jacob was limping after his experience. He walked differently, right? So we see that it's about what you understand, what you believe, and what you worship is the, the purpose of you understanding who are Yah's people and who Yah's people are not. So we have to make sure that we understand that we're looking at scripture, you know, when we're making statements um, that are not backed by um, some false understandings um, because we see that these people that are now called Israelites, that are now called Hebrews, were once idol worshipers. Praise Yah. Um, brother Brian. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Brother Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a good point because that's something that's that's uh that's something that definitely is uh and we always see that from the from the from the time they came out of Israel that there was a, it's, it's uh it's always been said that there was a mixed multitude anyway, even yes. when they came out of Israel and stuff. So um but yeah, it's interesting though. Also thinking back from last week, where uh, me uh, during Brother Rick's study, uh, uh, I mentioned about how like each um, did when you examine these nations historically and stuff, we see that um, there's a there's a spiritual a, a spiritual faith associated with these these empires, and um, and and. And at times, like you look at Daniel when uh, when they disobey the spiritual aspects of what they were mandated to do, they they were uh, like when the case of like in Daniel and Daniel was shot me Shek of uh, when they didn't bow down before the image, image they were put to they they were sentenced to death, and um, and so there was like a thick anti mashiach spirit associated with these uh, beast kingdoms. Um, as Daniel lays it out uh, with these different empires. And uh, and it's interesting too, like when you look at uh, 
when Yahusha was in the in the uh, was fasting um, past the time he was he was telling him that um, if he bows down and worships him if Yahusha bows down and worships him he will he said I have uh, I give you uh, all the kingdoms he was showing all the kingdoms uh, of this world and he was basically presenting them to Yah Yahusha and uh, and it kind of just goes to show where like the basis of these kingdoms they 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 put their foundation on these uh the 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 uh, basically the lord of this world has the time is what they base their their uh faith on and even to this day and um but uh, i was thinking about uh in this chapter i was thinking about ezra chapter nine mm. and uh which, so when you go in the future like the exact thing that was prophesied like like if you go into these intermarry with these people you're gonna fall away and Ezra chapter nine, that's exactly what happened. Of course, this is many years later during, uh, this is during the uh, Artaxerxes, which is a, the, the ruler of a, the Persian. Persian, yeah. Yeah, so this is many years later, but this played out like like to the T, like. After the uh, so we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it says, it says now when these uh, things were done, the princess, uh, came to me saying, the people of Joshua and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to the abomination, even of the, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Am Amorites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and and rulers have been have, have been chief of this trespass. And when I heard uh, this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard and sat down astonished. And uh, it goes on from there, so I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, but yeah, it's just interesting how like this played out and you have like this um, infiltration even of the priesthood itself at the time, which is really like serious. And, and uh, this mingling of seed with the nations and how it's like, it's not just a matter of, like you were saying, it's not this, a matter of physical physical thing it's a matter of a spiritual it's a spiritual uh warfare that's going on a spiritual spiritual thing, uh, spiritual warfare that's taking place throughout time uh between the between as we go back to genesis the seed of the serpent and the seed of of uh, the seed of the woman and so yeah it's um so it, it's just interesting how like it, i think today uh we see today that we don't realize that, but well, I'm not supposed to, I can't paint a broad brush. Some people do obviously realize, but when it comes to, when it comes to the, the gospel, uh, when it comes to faith, it, it, is, it is a gospel of the kingdom of, of Yahuwah. It is a, we are, we are a nation of people. We, although we live in these physical empires uh, in all shapes and sizes and forms and stuff, the spiritual reality is 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 like the scripture said we are to separate ourselves from the nations and 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 and, and put God's word over it, over the word of man and whenever man's these um these empires tell us to, to do something that that's contrary to God's word we are to be to be civilly disobedient just as just as the uh the prophets were and that we see throughout scripture like the, the, the example with, with uh, Daniel and the uh, and um and his associates and and all that and um and so yeah it's it's um uh, yeah it's just interesting just remind me of what, what we were talking about last week and you know the brother Rick was saying about how the uh he, he mentioned the what's it called the uh Constantine Creed and at that time where it basically was basically uh filtering out 
all all of the uh, basically filtering out y'all's word and and this and this and trying to uh, basically create a man-made doctrine, which is which which the uh, Catholic Church and even the Protestant churches have have kind of carried out to this day, and basically understanding that yeah we have to get back to the ancient paths and realize the difference between a state, a state religion, and and the truth of Yah's word, um, and um, of course ask Yah for wisdom as we pray to to know the difference, and um, but yeah there's some um, Definitely a lot, so a lot of things here, and it carries over into what, what Yahusha was talking about during his time. Because when you understand what went on, how you had this mangling going on, we understand how Yahshua got to the point where Yahusha, uh, Yahusha, they was like willing to to kill Yahusha because you had this infiltration going on and this doctrines of man, and he uh, Yahusha preaches uh, against. In Matthew 23, calling them, uh, calling the Pharisees, um, basically call them um, serpents and and vipers, and and exclaiming to them, "How can you escape the damnation of hell?" And we go out throughout history, you see that this these Pharisees and the Levitical priests and all that was infiltrated because they mingled their seed with these nations and mingled their doctrines with, of demons and and all this stuff went on way back, way back. And and uh, so yeah, that's that's just what I wanted to to bring out there was yeah, Shalom. Yeah, yeah, Brian, absolutely. I I, I like a couple of things you said. Uh, well, I liked everything you said, but I I, I want to pull out a couple of things. And and that was, you mentioned you know the Catholic Church, you know, coming from the Constantine edicts. Um, and what's interesting is you also mentioned the Protestant Church, and the Protestant Church actually was protesting the Catholicism, right? But they didn't continue. They stopped at a certain point and kept some of the edict intact instead of going all the way back to Torah, which is sad. But they had the right idea to protest uh, those things, the Catholicism. The other thing you said was that the people, um, the individuals, um, because when we look at the system, the belief system, the idolatry is what Yahuwah wanted them to get away from, you know, otherwise we wouldn't have Caleb attaching to the tribe of Judah and being called an Israelite, you know, we wouldn't have Rahab who was a Canaanite when Joshua took them into the cities, Rahab, you know, speaking on behalf of Yah and the children, then becoming David's great grandma. You see what I'm saying? In the line of Messiah. So we know that it was always an opportunity for individuals to repent. Yah always looking for an opportunity for it. That's why he said to Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorites has not yet come to full. I want to give them opportunity. But they've gotten so bad that they have to be ejected from the land and destroyed, their idols destroyed so that it doesn't permeate my people and what my people leave. I want one nation. I don't care where you came from. If you believe like my nation believes, you are part of my nation. That's what Yahuwah is saying all throughout scripture. A couple sisters had their hands up. Sorry, I know your arms are getting tired. Sister Leonia and then Sister Nicole. Oh, thank you, I put my hand down. Thank you so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Um, Shabbat Shalom. Good to Shabbat see you. Shalom. Um, yeah, enjoying the study. And I just, uh, <laughs> this is Diane. Um, I was just yeah, compelled to raise my hand um, yeah, just, to, just to clear up any confusion, just in terms of when you're talking about these Moabites and Amorites. Um, I always get a bit confused when I'm, you know, this reading history and you know the people in that era the people in that era are all class classified as israelites and then in other literature or texts they're called hebrews so could you just like that like, clear up um that in terms of you know listing all these nations are they separate or included inclusive with hebrews when you say israelites 
uh, no, one, no. In the, one in the same. So, so the Israelites are the sons of Israel, which which was Jacob, right? And the the Hebrew Hebrew comes from uh, the experience of crossing over. Uh, we read in Joshua where Yahuwah took Abram from being uh, a Canaanite idol worshiper to being a follower. That's what Hebrew means to cross over. He literally, we literally read, we crossed over on the other side of the river. That's what a Hebrew is. So is that in, Israelite that, is one and the same, it's synonymous with each other. Is it, is it, is it quoted in the Bible? That's what that means. Because I've always believed that Hebrew Israelite is just like a nation of people, like a Hebrew, no, no. like they're born. Mommy. Hold on, a Hebrew Israelite. Okay. Yeah. yeah the, if, if you look up, if you look up Hebrew, it's going to tell you to, to that it's to cross over. Um, and the experience that, Is that an not only, not only um, um, happened with um, Abraham. So we just read in Joshua. All right. This is where we read um, Eber, right? Um, Genesis, but in Joshua 24, in verse 3, it says, Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him through all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants. And then I gave him Isaac, Isaac, and gave him Jacob. So, and also when we remember um, the experience that Jacob had, um, he held on um, when he was wrestling and um, he held on, he wrestled and he prevailed. He waited for Yah to give him his blessing. When that situation mm -hmm. was over, his name was changed to Israel. So the Israelites were the sons, the 12 tribes of Jacob. Yeah. Yeah, you got the Jacobites and um, is it Isaacsons or Saxons? Isaacsons. Yes, yeah, exactly. from Isaac. From Isaac. The Isaacsons? Yeah. Where, where do you see that? Um, they were basically, they were Israelites and they were from the son of Isaac, the descendants of Isaac. The descendants of Isaac were Isaacsons um formerly saxons um and then you got the jacobites which were from jacob well the sons uh, the sons of jacob are the israelites 12 tribes of israel yeah we go more into that i think as well yeah later in deuteronomy because we're early in i didn't know i just wanted to distinguish it because i know they hadn't been labeled the 12 tribes until later in Deuteronomy, but because we're still in the early part of Deuteronomy, I was like, are they separated still? Or were they all one nation under like called Israelites or are they Israelites and Hebrews? Because, you know, you were mentioning both of them. So I was like, just trying to figure out if they were included in that nation of Moabites, Amorites, Hebrews, are they all? Well, one? Moabites and Amorites, they were, the surrounding nations that were separated from the Israelites. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, at some point, they were all connected, but they had a whole belief system that was different. So what separated the Israelites, the Hebrews, from all other nations was that they believed in the one and true Elohim. Okay. Uh, so there was Hebrews that had the so Hebrew was basically a belief system that were that Israelite people believed in. They were called Hebrew Hebrews, and yeah. everyone else was not a Hebrew. They didn't believe in Hebrews. Him. Were followers of Yah, yes, and That's still what? are. Really? <laughs> if you are a follower of Yah, yeah, you are a Hebrew. You are oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> Did this blow my mind? I didn't know that. This yeah, there's all, all, it's always been his desire to have one nation. One nation. One yeah. Nation. Yes. So it's not about um, hereditary and where you're from, because they obviously have mentioned these nations for a reason in the Bible. So he didn't mind just all mixing as long as we became Hebrew and believed in him. Absolutely. 
You can right. mix, but you had to believe what we believe. That's right. why he says your servants, the sojourners, if they believe what you believe, they could partake in your feast. They could travel with you. They were even attached to the to to the tribes. They would give them a tribe to be attached to. They'll give them from the beginning. Yep. As as long as they believed as a Hebrew, they they then came went into a tribe. That's that absolutely true. Didn't matter about lineage coming down from anything. Just believed. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Brother Rick, did you have something to say to that, or you have another question? Joyful songs been waiting. Yeah, I just wanted to even bring a little more clarity to the word Hebrew. I mean, that that's a a Latin actually word where the actual word was uh, Avri. Um, that that's more of the and it's actually the the Hebrew language, if you would want to call it that, would be called the Avri. Um, so, you know, we, we also call it Phileo, um, you know, there, but the, the Aubrey is also what those people who actually were called, uh, you know, we translate it or it's translated as a Hebrew, um, but, you know, the, the true purity of the, of the word actually, you know, if you want to get it to that is Aubrey. You know, but it, but it is what Brother Rod said. You know, so it's still it's it's a follower of the of the way, if you will. That's why you, even in the Brit we call it Nazarene. You know, keeper of the way. You know, so that's really what this is about more than anything is keeping the statutes, the the, the Torah uh, of Yahuwah, You know, the commandments, all of those things, the righteous judgments. You know, we're trying we're trying to emulate Him. That's why we observe and obey and understand and recognize what those things are that we can't touch or do so that we can stay set apart as his chosen people. You know, that's the important part is how we walk and live our lives, you know, and that's what they were, you know. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to bring a little more clarity to that particular topic. Sister Nicole. Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, to everybody. I just wanted to just uh, comment on the marriage prohibition uh, in Deuteronomy chapter um, 7, real quick. Just speaking in reference to the prohibition against marriages outside of the faith, to be specific. Israel was supposed to be a light unto the nations. As the elder pointed out, we're not supposed to have intimate relationships with unbelievers. You know, the scripture, be, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. It would be akin to marrying one's enemy, so to speak, to a certain extent. So we are not to allow an unbeliever to get too familiar with us. This familiarity breeds contempt with people outside of what we believe. In other words, that, that unbeliever will not look at things the same way we do. They won't handle challenges and situations like we handle them. Um, they ultimately won't respect our beliefs. And I'm not saying that there aren't any exceptions to that, but I'm talking about the general rule. Getting married to a person who is an unbeliever sets a person up to be influenced by that person. For as we know, it is written that evil communications corrupt good manners. And here's the thing. They know that you are supposed to be the person who does the influencing. Okay, so they know that. So knowing that you've lowered yourself to marry this person causes them to lose respect for you. I think that's my opinion in many cases. Um, again, are there any exceptions? Yes, there are, but they are rare. And they're not the rule. And why, you know, why take a chance? So we are to be a light to the nations and to be the example, not the other way around. Marrying outside of your faith is denying reality, I think, and sets us up for many troubles and challenges that are unnecessary. And, you know, I'm just thinking, why stress your life? And why be a glutton for punishment? 
So I just wanted to just add that. And I think that these things are put in place to help us to, to be protected. Uh, they are there to protect us and keep us from harm. And of course, these things can carry on into uh, subsequent generations. So we have to be mindful of that. I'm not talking about people who come into this that are already married to unbelievers. That's different. Paul addresses that. But I'm talking about, hey, you're already in this and then you're thinking about getting married. You know, why would you step outside of this? It doesn't make sense. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Thank you, sister, for, for also very good, by the way. Thank you for also making the distinction um, between you know, having the knowledge and going out and, and marrying someone of a different faith and coming into the faith already married and not having been of the faith prior. It told two totally different things. And uh, they, they, they all present their different challenges, but yeah, it's faithful in that as well. Um, but yeah, um, you're, you're, it's, it's failure from the start. You know, even even the mindset, well, I can change them. <laughs> you know, I can change this beautiful woman or I can change this handsome man to be, you know, a man of Yah, to be a woman of Yah. No, <laughs> they're gonna drag you away. You know, just the exhaustion of going through the, 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 the paces, you know, to get you to the, that place can destroy you. You know, it's, um. You know, we used to call it a, uh, um, what do we used to call it? What's it called, Sister Nicole? Uh, uh, dating. Um, courtship? Co not courtship. It's called. Uh, um, Betrothal? No, no, no. Okay. Not I'm trying fight. to figure out what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's <laughs> like when you're, uh, you're dating, but you're also witnessing at the same time. It's called, uh, it's called something. Because you're trying to per the person you're dating, you're trying to convert them. Um, Proselyting? Nah. No. Um, I'm sorry, brother. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I, I know. June knows. Is June on? Where's June? He's not on. Um, but uh, yeah, I forgot the term. It's a term, but we're not to do that. You know, uh, it'll come to me. Praise y'all. Brother Charles, thank you, sister. Um, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And Shabbat Shalom, bro. Yeah. I don't feel too worthy to speak these past two weeks, but um, something made me speak. Today, so uh, I was listening to the sister Leona, I guess. And um, but before I speak on that, I just want to say um, verse four in Deuteronomy. It correlates with um with First Kings one. I'm in First Kings eleven, one through eight, when um King Solomon had um married the foreign women and foreign daughters of the um you know the pharaohs and women of Moabites and Amorites and the Edomites the Sidonians and the Hittites and stuff like that, from the nations whom Yahuwah has said, the children of Yashara, you shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you surely. They will turn away your hearts after the Elohims. And Solomon, he clung to these in love. And that word clung, I, I, I believe it, it really means something. And, um, yeah, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you get the picture. Um, he he ended up making, um, I guess, uh, um, a replicum or, or something for, for, for one of his wives, and it was an abomination to, to Yahuwah and, and all those things. And that's the thing that he didn't want us to um, do. It wasn't, it wasn't like you couldn't marry other um, um, other nations of people, but but if they're not in the in the in the um, system of, of Torah or belief definitely stay away from because they can um their children will grow up and they will turn on you because it's just like when you have a child and they find out like this person killed my my daddy he gonna think about that and it might come back to his heart and you want to take revenge you know also um verse five 
it correlates with um second kings 18 it says i'm gonna just read a little bit it says now 18 one it says now it came to pass in the third year of hosea the son of eli king of joshua that hezekiah the son of ahaz king of judah began to reign he was 25 years old when he became king and um I'm gonna step down to four. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image and broke in, broken pieces of bronze serpent that Moshe had made for until those days of the children of Yahshua burned incense to it and called it Nehus, Nehustim and stuff like that. So it was just showing you that um, he would come and break those things down and stuff like that. So. Um, that's what I want to say to that. And, um, one last thing, you know, I don't talk that long. I've talked this long for a reason. Uh, I believe that when people ask in the question about um, is the Yasharal or is Israel Israelites, are they a, a nation or, or they can just marry other people? People are trying to really, I ain't gonna say her, but most people are trying to find a distinction of weight. So what you're saying, an Israelite is anything that just believes. You're saying it's not a heritage because sometimes people feel feel a hurt battle or, or feel people are being disingenuous because people will feel like, well, what the people that came over in slavery, what were they? And what did they just go through slavery for nothing? So right. what does that mean? So so sometimes people will feel like Man, that's disingenuous. Then, well, I guess the people went through slavery for nothing. What, what about them? So it's just wipe them out from from a heritage or something. So, 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 because I go through this and I, I've heard this before, and, and I felt that way too. It just feel like, but you're trying to wipe wipe what the people did when they came into slavery away. No, they are the majority of those are the people of Yahshua, but but at the same time. Is still a grafted on um, part of the tree. If you graft on to it, you're just as much as well Yashara or a believer than than somebody who is bloodline because somebody bloodline can can care less and because you know because they turned into other ways. So that's what I have to say about that. Is just yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely no, that, that's well. abs yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, you know, it it is it is still a bloodline. Absolutely, without question. Um, but the the ultimate understanding is is one nation. It was always supposed to be one nation, which was Israel. But that's why Paul says in Romans, not all Israel is Israel, because they don't have the understanding or belief whether they got the bloodline or not to follow Yah. Ishmael, his brother was Isaac. His father was Abraham, you know? Jacob and Esau. Esau went a completely different way. His descendants are the, are the Edomites. They're still bloodline Israel, right? They're not Israel, <laughs> right? So we have to make sure we understand not all Israel is Israel. So it is a bloodline, but it's, but it's the, the, the true Israelites, the true Hebrews, are those that follow Yah, those that keep his law, precepts, and commandments, those that believe in the Messiah, you know. So we have to also make that distinction so there's no misunderstanding. I see a thumbs down from Leonia. Do you want to say something, sister? I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's about my thumbs down. I just, yeah, I'm not, I don't know about um, there's no distinction. I do feel there is, and and that's why there's a, like a royal family we have now. This it's very important to have a bloodline, um, and things do get um, looked over. Like you know, only recently I've learned no, that. No, I say when I say no distinction, I'm talking yeah. about as far as yeah, yeah, seeing those who believe, trust, and follow him. When he sees someone grafted in, yeah. he sees them the same as a true bloodline Israelite that follows him. That's what I mean by no distinction. Not there's no distinction of those that are bloodline. That's not what I'm saying. You have to listen to what I'm saying. So, so why, why turn, that thumb back, turn that thumb back up. Turn it back up. All right. <laughs> 
I'm talking about the way Yahshua okay. sees. sees. He looked at Joshua and he looked at Caleb and he saw the same thing, even though Joshua's bloodline Hebrew and Caleb was a Kinzanite. So we have to make sure there's no distinction when he looks at those two because they both believe the same thing. They both followed him. They both trusted him. They both had faith in him. You see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll let you go. I'll, I'll put my hands up later on down the line as well. Maybe um, as, it go, as it goes along, it might make sense more sense as it goes along. I'm, That's I'm okay. Sorry. That's okay. But when I see the thumbs down, I got to respond yeah. to that so that we don't lose you, you know, during the course of the lesson. Okay. Thank you. Praise you. Brother Rick. Yeah, um, kind of want to share, you know, kind of in that in that heart, because the scripture talks, even in the Tanakh, you know, you see examples of those that followed, you know, the the feast, and um, also in what is it Romans? I just had it here and I lost it. I don't know what what I did with it here. Uh, here, uh, Romans 11, 11 through 31, where it says, so I ask, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so that to make Yasserel jealous. So there's a distinction of the two here, where you have the people that were scattered to the four corners of the earth. You know, there is a a bloodline, if you will, uh, of the people that we're talking about today. But that's where, you know, that encompasses the whole of nation of Yasserel. But then you have the other part, even, even those that are of the bloodline aren't necessarily Yasserel because they don't follow the Torah. You know, the things that actually allows Gentiles to enter in and be grafted in. Both the blood, uh, and I was looking for the scripture, but there's, uh, you know, the blood, uh, but also, or the, the native, the wild, uh, the wild, but also the grafted in, that's going to be part of Yasserel. So both have to come in through the same doorway, which is through righteousness, by, through obedience, um, following the Torah. That's what this is about. And that's what actually makes us Yasserel, is that. That's the people of Yahuwah, those that are following his way, the keepers of the way. So that's what we, that's really what Yahuwah is talking about here. Uh, even in the verse that Brother Rob just shared with you about, you know, those that are, but that aren't, you know, that, that clarifies because you have a bloodline and, that, and you can kind of try to claim that your bloodline, you know, um, that's not an easy thing to really to to prove, but you know uh, if you are of uh, the nationality or the color, if you will, uh, to answer like Brother uh, Charles's comment or statement, uh, you know the slave trade. Yes, they those people definitely probably were of Yasserel, of the bloodline. That's that's the curse, the bondage, right? That we, we hear about the scripture talks about for the 400 years, you know, uh, or 430, whatever it was. Um, but there's also another, you know, the, 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 they're, they're trying the, the, there's the prophecies about the bondage of, of Yasserel. So there's no doubt that there's a bloodline that was scattered to the four corners. There's no doubt about that. But when it all comes back to uh, the oneness, that's where the branches come together and unite. That's where we become one. And that's the real true body, uh, uh, the real, you know, that, that, that one that loves Yahuwah, that loves Yahusha, loves the commandments, walks in that, those statutes and judgments. Those are the ones that are Yasharal. Hallelujah. That's, that's you and I, you know, no matter our, our color of our skin, you know, we, we both have the same title, if you will. You know, we're both his chosen ones. You know, it does, you know, he, he made all the colors. You know, 
made as diverse and beautiful as we are. That's why it comes down to our hearts, not our skin colors. You know, I don't, I, I don't look at its color. I mean, I'm, I'm in love with my brother Rod right here, you know, uh, brother Jadiel, you know, and, and the rest of you, it doesn't matter what color, what, who, you know, that doesn't matter because you guys love just like, just like he, Yahusha, why he was chosen of Yahuwah because he loved the ways of Yahuwah. That's why we are his people, because we love the things of Yahuwah, his ways. And we're trying to be refined, to allow ourselves to be refined, to actually be those people, so that we can actually be that light and salt we talked about earlier. Hallelujah. I just wanted to share that. Praise God. That Thank you, brother. That's, um, that's real good. And, and I, just wanna, I just want to, uh, here's the thumbs up, Bill. I see it. <laughs> I just want to um, you know, clarify for everyone. Even though it may seem like it, there is no stone that is going to be unturned. Have we not proven that since we started in Genesis? We are going to dissect everything. We're going to clear up everything. We're going to go through Deuteronomy 28, slow as a tortoise, so that there is no misunderstanding. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that we're going to discuss all of those things. Um, but one of the things that we have to be sh sure upon is ultimately, as Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, 28, he says, neither Yahudin nor Greek, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are one. In Yahushua Messiah. And that's ultimately what the Father wanted. He wanted one nation. You know, so that's where we rest our hat. We're not going to ignore slavery. We're not going to ignore the depiction of what we've seen all of our lives in this lily white world. We're not going to ignore that. We're going to talk about it all. So keep your hats on, family. We'll go through it all. Sister Diane. Praise y'all. This is very good and very important because it comes up often. Um, just like this morning, this knowledge goes back to, and, and I want to go to Exodus, the second book, you know, when the Israelites uh, <clears throat> were having their Passover. Um, if I may, Brother Rod, I would like to read uh, from Exodus 11. 43 through 51. Sure, sure, good. Okay. Um, this is the orders of the Passover. Um, Exodus um, 12, 43 through 51, and it reads, And Yahuwah said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. We want to look at, you know, uh, point out that we're a stranger. But every man's servant that is brought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And verse 48, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to Yahuwah, let all males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, and Yahuwah commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that Yahuwah did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So to me, this is the this is the institution of it and the ordinances where um, 
in order to be able to participate in the lifestyle and their life and to become an Israelite, certain things had to be done. These verses mention circumcision of the flesh. The males may be circumcised, but it also says in verse 48 that for no uncircumcised person. And uh, of course, we think of males, but I didn't, I didn't think about that part because we read Paul say in Hebrew and Hebrews that this is the circumcision of the heart, right? So this really ties in with no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof or participate in Passover, which which ultimately is participated as an Israelite in the ordinances of Yahuwah. And these ordinances also uh, are part of the Ten Commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances of Yahuwah. So in other words, the sojourner or the Gentile or whatever we want to call it becomes an Israelite based on their behavior and what they do, you know, even before we get into uh, the Brit Hot Show. Thank you. Sure. Great job. Very, very good. Very good. Um, uh, <clears throat> and clear understanding of what, you know, exact same thing Galatians says um, and necessary for our understanding. Thank you, Sister. Um, Sister Nicole. <laughs> Just real quick, a, a, you know, yes, 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 and yes to uh, what Mother Diane said, and yes, some more. Uh, you know, it's here's the thing: the Heavenly Father is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't care who you are, where you come from. It's always been the plan, the redemptive plan, ever since Adam and Eve fell in the garden, to bring Adam and Eve's descendants back into the fold. You know, whosoever will let him come. There is a grafting in, and it talks about even the natural branches being able to be grafted in again, which would suggest that they have had to go out in the first place. So we have both the natural branches that have gone astray, and then we have Gentiles that have been astray. So what are we saying here? That it that, that it color makes no difference. I don't care who you are. It makes no difference. You can be a part of the bloodline and still bust hell wide open with your behavior and your belief system. Okay, so it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. And when I say that, I don't mean that our history doesn't matter. That's not what this is about. But it's letting us know that all of us have the chance and the opportunity to become Israel. And it's always been the Heavenly Father's goal to have one Israel, period. And I just wanted to add that. And I'm done for the day. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> that's, that's good. Praise you. Thank you. Spice one. Um, Brother Charles. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom again, and um, you know I'm gonna let you go on here, you know, I'm talk quick. So yeah, uh, I I had definitely um brought that up, um, and and I left a little some out to say for Deuteronomy later on, you know, to give them better understanding, you know, um, of, of what I was, what else other people may be saying because. You know me, I, I, I will, I'm going to give it to you exactly how I hear it out here. And it's a real big misunderstanding. And people are very heated and passionate about this. And people just feel like when they hear something from someone else, they're, they're rejecting. They're probably just rejecting the bloodline. But but it's it's just a miscommunication between everybody. And it's, sometimes people leave certain things out. And that's the reason why you have these different... um these 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 um debates and um um I can't find the word but um uh, I just want to say real quick if we all are, are 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 humans right so we all are supposed to be fruit so if you take an apple fruit or apple fruit or a pear fruit it all has a tree come from a tree so this tree may be a may be a a, a crimson I mean I can't think of the um the, a crispy a crispy apple just say it said that's a brand of a, um Honey crisp. Oh, I forgot the name of the apple. Honey crisp. Well, just say, huh? Yeah, honey crisp. Just say, honey crisp is supposed to be so-called black people, and then you got the green, green apple that's supposed to be Caucasians, and then you got so on and so forth. So you take that original honey crisp, or you take that green apple, and you graft it onto that 
to that honey crisp tree is still going to bear the same fruit, even though it's it's a different type of fruit or a different color fruit. But if you try to go put a pear on that tree, it's not going to grow because it's not a part of that of that tree. So that's the same thing of um I'm feeling like with um even though you you might be of Yasharal, if you're not a part of that tree or that those same type of fruit, you're not gonna grow and you're not gonna be a part of that tree. So uh, that's all I'm trying to say. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> one of the things we also want to be mindful of too is that, you know, we're all at different levels of understanding, we're all at different levels of knowledge and you know, sometimes we have questions. Um, sometimes we have a hard time breaking away from understandings that we already had. Um, but we seek to we seek to find truth in the scripture. So, you know, <clears throat> all questions are welcome and you know, we'll we'll get to the bottom of everything as we walk together. Praise God. Brother uh Brian and then Sister Leon. Yes, yeah, yeah, hey, Um yeah, I was just thinking about how, like, like throughout history and stuff, in scripture, we see that, uh, yeah, y'all's ways are, his, his, uh, y'all gets, uh, as Chris says, vengeance is, is, is mine, save y'all, and I will repay and stuff. So, like, I understand um, what Brother Charles is coming from when he was talking about slavery and stuff, but that's um, growing up in the school system and stuff. That's, that's one of the things that, that growing up, I was like, what is going on? Why, why throughout the world? Because slavery wasn't just about America. It was, it was slavery going on all over the world. <laughs> and uh and you go down to South America and, and Caribbean and and in the north, even to this day in North Africa, there's still slavery going on uh, to this day as we speak and stuff and then it's just like what is going on with where where this just kind of this like this weirdness with with uh with black folk and stuff but uh but yeah it's like i think about history where it's like like you yeah, had the civil rights movement with martin luther king malcolm x and all that kind of stuff and but what yah says it's just like he says to focus on him, like it's Second Chronicles seven fourteen. He says, "If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and see my face, turn from wicked ways, then shall I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land." And I think about that was the missing part of of the whole, like when I think about the civil rights movement, that was the, that was the miss, that was the main thing is getting back to to Yah, getting back to his, his the ancient past. And uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 16 says, when a man's ways pleases the most high, he will cause his enemies to be at peace with him. And, and uh, so like, yeah, there's been many things that went on throughout history and it's emotional and everything. But uh, when you study scripture and you study Yah's ways and how he deals with Yasharal, how he deals with the nations, nobody, although these, these terrible things happen throughout history, ain't nobody getting away with nothing. And ain't nobody getting away with anything. You read the prophecies and everything. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 14 is one of them. And it goes throughout scripture. These nations don't get away with anything. Misraim got tore up from the floor up. Babylon got tore up from the floor up. Um, you read Revelations, the nations, the nations that did wrong get tore up from the floor up. And so you, that, gets, that, that can give us um, peace. And, and Shalom, that Yah is the righteous judge, the vengeance is his, and uh, he, he'll make right that was wrong and, um, and everything like that. So, but the main thing is his people, instead of focusing on man, and uh, like, we, like like there's the emotion about man, the white man with the white man, all this kind of stuff. It's not about that. It's, it's about Yah's word. It's about being obedient. And when we're obedient, all these other things all these other things get rectified. And that was the whole, I believe that was the whole issue throughout history and this, uh, and even in recent history with the civil rights movement and all that, it's about getting right with y'all. And when we get right with him, the physical, the the physical falls into place and and uh, his, our land is, is healed. And I, I, I do believe that. And, um, and everything. So yeah, that's just more of the comment on that. So shalom. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It can it can be a serious di 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 uh, distraction away from where y'all wants us. And even now, even now, um, how you know, even the news cycles are are, are, are pinpoint racially charged, you know, um, content sometimes over and above and beyond what actually is happening. Um, not to say that there aren't cases that are happening because there are, but for there to be a constant focus on it, you know, there that it's a distraction and it always is for certain groups of people. And, and that's why they pinpoint. So we have to be mindful not to be thrown off course um, by, by what Yah has for us um, versus uh, what is purposely meant to lead us astray. So praise Yah. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to finish this chapter for sure. We got to verse five, which is fine and okay. But I'm going to hit these hands and then we'll close out. Praise you. Hello, Thank you, Brother Wood. I'm just going to come in quickly. I won't keep it up long. Um, <laughs> I can see there's a cue behind me. Um, I just wanted to just clarify that um, I'm, I'm not trying to race bait or anything like that. I just feel like this, this particular book is quite, you know, interesting and quite obvious in this, you know, presentation, you know, who it's about, I guess. And I just try, I just get a bit heated when it's not, it's kind of overlooked. And I just thought it's very, very important to not, to not look at it for what it is. I mean, that book was provided to us, survived all these centuries and all these haters and all these people that want to hide the truth. And it's still here in hard form for us to read and look at and dissect and read between the lines. And I feel, yeah, we should look at it. I mean, what is the problem if it is about color i mean the ultimate goal is not to, the book doesn't say this one color forever and a day has the sovereignty and no one else is included it doesn't say that anywhere in the book so it's just at that period of time those people were on the earth and you know there was a majority and especially in that particular area of the world so um <clears throat> i just feel like it's it's there's no harm in looking at it and dissecting it and asking questions whether it is about race or not you know um it, it just it just paints a more intricate tapestry um on that on that chapter of of, of life you know um and i feel that her heritage is important and you know it should be looked at and there's nothing wrong with that. I think if it was other races, that wouldn't be an issue for me either. So, you know, to, to just go, dig a bit deeper, it shouldn't be an issue and people shouldn't be getting hot about it or feeling uncomfortable about it as a, as a racial race, race as ethnic minorities were normally at the bottom and browbeaten and disrespected. So what this is something quite powerful where if we're in the bible then it should be celebrated and looked at do you know what i mean um and ultimately yes there's a reason there's so many colors on the earth and yahuwah made them all so there's not like he's made people to exclude them it's all a part of his big plan and it should just be looked at embraced and um you know not hidden and i'll leave it there thank you for that. yeah no absolutely and that's why i said earlier that you know we're not going to overlook it um, you know, I think, <clears throat> I think there is a, you know, you know, in regards to communication and messaging, um, you know, there has been a disregard, uh, for many, many years. Um, and, you know, people are looking at certain things in regards to, um, heritage. They're looking at certain things in regards to region. They're realizing things aren't what they were. Um, and there's a revelation to many. Um, so stand on the top of the mountain and scream it the same way you were screaming it before is the mindset. And I get that. Um, <clears throat> but I think ultimately, we want to make sure that we're speaking truth regardless. And, you know, nothing's going to be um, ignored or forgotten about. And, you know, we, we are all ears towards questions and no one is going to make anyone else feel any kind of way i don't think anyone was was um um necessarily 
uh, pointing to you. I think there's an overall dis dispute in general. And that's what people are speaking to because it is not you, because our family, we're gonna talk about it all. But but I just wanna make sure you understood that as well. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Definitely. It is a good subject. And you know, Deuteronomy was kind of hidden in in, in Christianity. It's not a, I don't remember ever reading a verse from Deuteronomy in the church. So to go this deep into it, I'm really thankful and I'm all ears, you know, to hear everyone's opinion. It's good. Thank you. Praise you. All right, Brother Paul, and then we'll, oh, Brother Rick too, so, and so keep it coming. So Paul, Dean, and Carmen, and then Brother Rick. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom again. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to go into the race thing, but I think like so many Thank thousands, you, thank you. So many <laughs> thousands of years ahead now, I think it's, it's like, um, you know, it'd almost be impossible to say anybody was any form of direct anymore, you know. Um, but the question I had, which first it came into my head for a reason, I don't don't know why. Um, the tribes that are spoken about and, and things like that. Is there any mention in scripture about the people who live in, you know, still live in jungles, still live remote, don't have, you know, there's some, you know, there's actually some uh, cannibal people in the world there's people that you know um practice strange spiritual practices with animals and forests and things like that are, are they ever mentioned in scripture you know um yeah as, as um, in like the ones away from the nations if you like um Yeah, it, it is. Let me let me find it real quick. Mm -hmm. um, let me get back to you, Dean, and yeah. then I'll get back to Paul. Go ahead, Brother Dean. Uh, shalom, shalom, shalom. Um, so I just wanted to say just really quickly, um, this is a, a very powerful discussion. Um, but what um, I wanted to just throw a couple of things out there. When, um, when children are in a, in a, in a, born into a family and, you know, they, let's say, for example, there is a breakdown in the family and the mother or the father are no longer there and, and, and becomes a traumatic experience, uh, then now when you try and introduce them to a new person and say, hey, this is your new mother or this is your new father, they struggle with the concept of having a new father and new mother because their their original experience was traumatic the same in reference to when uh, power is abused and um, you're told that you have a master you know um uh yahusha Hamashek, but you were uh, went through an experience where master was something that was an oppressive uh, abuse so now this literally to me is all works of the enemy. All of it is all works of the enemy because now we have a situation where there can be uh, uh, a distaste for the original plan of Yahuwah with the mother and the father, one, um, you know, in one, or when it comes to the respect for authority, we can have a, tr a problem with respecting authority wh wherever, in, in whatever surrounding that may be, even whether it's for people with familiar faces or unfamiliar faces, um, it's all discord. And I'm not talking about the topic. What I'm talking about is all of these things spawn from divisiveness. It all creates division, um, even where there should be a natural sense of oneness because uh, of the seed to me where this actually comes from. And that's all I wanted to say. Peace be with you all. Yes. Absolutely. Um, we agree with that. Um, other. Um, it is definitely a device of the enemy as well. Um, we have, you know, actual and historical facts um, that surround that. Um, but it's it's meant to be a distraction. It's meant to 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 cause division. Um, so we can we can definitely 
uh, see that clearly. I'm looking, I was looking in Romans um, because I, I remembered, um, Um, I was uh, thinking about um, Romans 1 um, in regards to that, but there's a passage that talks about, and, and maybe some of you can help me, where it talks about men can tell by the things. Oh, here it is. Um, Starting in verse 18 of Romans chapter one, for the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what they what may be known of Elohim is manifest in them for Elohim has shown in them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So we see clearly that there's a, a understanding of Elohim in creation. Um, but there's um, another passage that, that answers Paul's question of the man being on an island Um, oh, I think, is this it? Um, Romans 3, 21, but now the righteousness of Elohim apart from the law is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of Elohim through faith in, in Yahushua Messiah, to all and on all who believe, for there, there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Elohim, being justified freely by his grace through redemption through Yahushua Messiah. Um, the whole of Romans 3 talks about, um, you know, everyone falling under this bloodline of Adam, which is sin, right? Um, but what then, he says in verse nine, are we better than they? Um, speaking of those under condemnation, not all, for we have previously ch charged both Yahudim and Greeks that they are all under sin. So this this talks about the, 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 the Yahudim and the Gentile. But um, I'm, I'm kind of, I can't find in my mind where, where the passage is that Paul is looking for. So, um, June, do you know? Well, I was going to suggest two scriptures after the one you read. Uh, Romans 1 verse 20 and also Psalm 14 verse 1. Yeah, I just read Romans 1 20. So Psalm what? 14 verse 1. Psalm 14 verse 1. You want to read it? Go ahead. I thought you read verse uh, 18. Okay, let me see. Oh, I read all the way through 2021. 20, okay, so Psalm 14 verse 1 says, uh, the poll says in his heart, there is no Elohim. Um, they, they are corrupt, their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. Yahuwah looks down from the heavens on the sons of men to see if there is any who understand, any who seek him. But I don't think that's the one you were looking for. No, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to look for that. But you know- Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Was, one of the things that was, um, there was a study done by some missionaries um, that went to some of these remote places that you're talking about in the Amazon. And when they got there, 
They saw that they had moral laws set in. Never saw a Bible, never heard of, you know, scripture, but they had moral laws, uh -huh. you know, similar to the Ten Commandments. You know, one man, one woman. Nobody touches anybody else's wife. They had, they had, you know, all of these moral laws set up in regards to understanding that there was morality um, that was uh, presented by creation. So, um, but yeah, I'll continue to look, uh, brother, to answer that question. Uh, brother Charles and then Brother Rick. Praise y'all. Um, I just had to say this before we leave because I, I, I believe we need to give a further um, answer. It, you know, uh, just want to say I'm not, I'm not trying to bring it back into color or nothing. And, you know, or none of that stuff. And, and I'm not hurt by anything if anybody say something because none of this stuff bothers me. You know what I'm saying? I'm very built up for this. So I just want to say another reason why people may be a little upset because people are going to say then, um, well, well, if you're going to bring up, oh, it's not about color and this and that and things like that, then, then who are these people? If they're, if they're, if they're a natural Yasharal, but they can't be, if they, they can be knocked off because they don't follow the law, that's right. But still, who are they? even if they don't follow the what's name, because even though a Caucasian may, somebody may, may look at them like, oh, you're not one of us, get out of here. Can you take away their color still? Can you take away their heritage still? You can't. They gotta be somebody, they gotta be called somebody. So what I'm trying to say is this, if you're white, somebody can kick you out, but you're still gonna be white or whatever culture you are, you're an Englishman or, or a German or, or Kenyan or whatever, you still got to be somebody. You got to be be not notified by somebody. So that's what I'm talking about. So so that people won't um, be so 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 um, I guess a little emotional about it because sometimes I I believe people do be emotional. They just don't want to say it, and that's the way it is. So 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 just praise y'all and know that we all. Are uh, part of this belief. As long as you believe in the Father loves you, He loves you regardless of what color you is. But just don't try to knock nobody out of nothing because you can't take no nothing from nobody. Only the Father can. So praise God. Brother Rick. All right, Brother Charles. Well, I, I guess I'll finish it with this. You know, I. I Yasserah was 12 tribes. My belief, and that's really all I can say, is that my belief is that the color from what one would call a black person to whatever shade it is, there's 12 na nations there. And I believe that we can see some kind of evidence that the American Indians, uh, you know, Hispanic type of folks, that there's, there's, there was the... Um, the Aubrey, it was written in Aubrey. The commandments of Yahuwah were written in, in New Mexico. So Yahuwah's people were here. You know, how do we distinguish whether, you know, now we know that Yehuda is described as, as a black person, you know, with the features and stuff that is described. So we know that's a foundational principle, but there's other shades also that you who have created and that are dispersed around the world. We don't know what those people are. So thankfully it comes back to, we can see by the, how they live their lives. That's the, the foundational principle, you know? Um, and thankfully, you know, I fit into that scheme of color somewhere because my heart is to follow him. So I believe that I'm grafted in and I'm also considered as Yasserel today in the, in the eyes of Yahuwah. And the last words is that Yahusha said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? You know, my sister. Who is those that follow and keep the commandments? Hallelujah. So that's that's where we'll leave it at today. Shabbat Shalom, family. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, I just want to add to that. I think, you know, <clears throat> there is an emotional tie and, and an emotional swing in regards to it being being 
cover it up, you know, because for many, 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 many years, you know, so-called black people were told they were the cursed ones in the Bible. So um, to to find out otherwise after researching, after understanding regions and, and all those things, it becomes important mainly because our heritage has been taken away. So to be able to trace it is that much more harder. But knowing our heritage is in Yah through his son um, is enough for me. Um, but trust me, I am not historically blind and I'm very educated on the topic and we're gonna talk about it. So let's, uh, let's leave it there. Oh, and the term I was thinking of earlier, uh, Nicole was uh, missionary dating. <clears throat> you know, we don't we don't do missionary dating. Um, gotcha. Right, right, right. So, praise God, June uh, reminded me what it was. But um, yeah, quite a bit. You know, this uh, I, I'm not surprised it went in the direction it was going to go because of you know what we looked at in verse three. Um, I'm not surprised that we didn't get past verse five and uh, I'm okay with that because, you know, Deuteronomy brings with it its own set of, 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 of emotions you know, for many different, for many people, for many different reasons. And, you know, it's important that, you know, we take our time to make sure that we're clear when we come out on the other side, right? Um, so that there's no misunderstanding at the very least in this specific fellowship, right? Uh, and ultimately to, to the world and all who hear. So praise God. Father, we thank you for this time. And we know you've overheard the hearts of the people, <clears throat> the passion of the people, and, and the truth, your truth, as we went through your scriptures and we dissected scriptures and we clarified scripture with scripture. Father, please continue to, to guide us, to teach us, to make clear even the mysteries, um, whether they're in our own mind, whether they are dispelling former teachings or former understandings. Let us see your word and see its truth without hesitation and without any distraction. Father, we thank you for all that are here today, all of the people in our fellowship and all that will ultimately hear, um, that it may bless them, that you may keep them, strengthen them, Father, so that we can live um, as you have called us to and be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. We thank you, we praise you, his name. Hallelujah. Amen. I was just saying hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. What a beautiful day. Well, it has been a powerful day of study today. Toda Roba. Praise Abba Yah from whom all Baraka flow. We hope this video encouraged you today. Don't forget to study to show yourself approved and be like the Bereans who tested everything. According to 2 Timothy 3.15 and Acts 17.11. We assemble every Shabbat and during the week with like-minded believers all over the world, virtually, and sometimes we gather in person for feast days. We have something for the whole family, including children. Discover more on our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com, where you can apply to join, give the biblical assembly needs, and find many biblical resources to help you grow in your walk with Yah. To know when we publish new videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Jeremiah 33 3 tells us, call to Yahuwah and he will answer you tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Much alone.